Hello there. Today I'm going to take a look at a Sauterne from the lovely 2007 vintage. So this is Chateau d'Arche. Uh, it's a Dizium Crew, actually from Sauterne. And as I say, this is a half bottle of the 2007 vintage. The estate has uh, an undeniably long history, although in places the way it's put across is a little confused. As far as I can see, the Darche family came to Bordeaux in the 1580s, and some people see that as the time of the establishment of this chateau. However, other notes suggest that the um, estate was Cru de Brannerie before it was um, purchased by the Darche family, and they, that they purchased it in 1611. And I think probably it's the case that the family coming to Bordeaux happens in 1580, and the acquisition of the estate happens in 1611. The estate has been through quite a number of hands, um, not in the least because in 1789 during the French Revolution it was seized um, and was divided up. At least one portion of it was owned by the Laferre family and so in 1855 when the classification happened of Bordeaux for the red wines of the Medoc, um, Aubryon in Grave, and um, also the Sauternes. This was classified as a second growth, but what was actually classified was uh, an estate called Darche Laferre, um, denoting the, the ownership by the Laferre family, also known for owning Chateau Laferre Perigueux. So that was 1855. Then in 1925, somebody called Armand Bastit Saint-Martin, who evidently at that stage was also the mayor of Sauterne, so some quite prominent people owning this, this estate, um, reunified all the parts of the original estate. Strangely, in Bordeaux, it's allowed that if a part of an estate has been classified, the rest can often be unified with it, because it's not the exact vineyard that's classified, it's the estate. So the entire estate is reunified in 1925 and becomes second, second growth to ZM Crew again. If we move swiftly on, we come to 1981, where the estate was actually purchased by somebody called Pierre Perramat. And Pierre, again, was quite a leading figure in French viticulture. Um, he had been the, and was at that stage for another couple of years after he bought the estate, the president of the INAO, which is the um, organization that regulates France's Appellation laws. So he was uh, quite an influential man. Um, he put quite a lot of effort into rejuvenating the estate. I mean, for instance, in 1996, they completely um, improved the drainage throughout the vineyards. The estate was sold in 2005, and all I see generally is the to an investor group and it's not particularly clear who that investor group was although I note that there is a group called Six Senses Hotels who are uh, developing the hotel on the site it's a small eight bedroom hotel so I, I possibly they are the the overall investors there and investment at the site has certainly continued because in 2019 they opened a brand new cellars state-of-the-art cellars with some some really nice um, environmentally friendly touches actually um, I mean it's an underground cellar so um, a lot of the movement of wines is done by gravity yeah, state-of-the-art temperature controlled um, fermentation rooms for um, to regulate the temperature fermentation some really interesting stuff about the fact that they had some really interesting um, ideas like for instance the micro polished stainless steel tanks that are being used to be able to reduce the number of cleaning agents required. Also on the environmental side of things um, they've reinstated ploughing with horses for 10 hectares of the vineyards and um, the entire um, estate has recently been certified with the um, certified high environmental value um, at level 3 um, certification. The estate itself, again, it's, there's some slightly confusing information about how big the estate is. I've seen people suggest 70 hectares and I've seen people suggest 53. And I've seen others suggest 56. I think what's correct is that for the production of sweet wine they have 53 hectares. 
Within the Sauterne region, they have about 56. That's because about two and a half of those hectares are used for producing dry wines, with red and white, in my understanding. The difference between the 70 hectare and the 56 hectare figure, I think, is accounted for by the fact that they also own vineyards producing AC Bordeaux wines. And in fact, they've got a really large product range because as well as still wines, dry wines, sweet wines, um, they also produce sparkling wine and um, they are marketing, um, I presume finishing and marketing, a number of spirits, so whiskies, brandies, rums, um, and some of those, and the rums I've seen certainly, um, being finished in sauterne casks, so um, adding the special flavour there to the, to the spirits. There are also a number of other sweet wines. There's a, a small plot of very old vines that they use to make a top cuvee, and there's a second wine in the, uh, in the Sauterne range. The estate sits on a hillside um, near the Ceron, overlooking the Ceron River, near um, Chateau La Tour Blanche. So it's an area that is uh, readily gets the fogs and mists needed to create botrytis. The um, diverse nature of the vineyards means there's actually quite diverse terroir. They have everything from uh, sand and gravel through areas of more rocky, stony soil um, and also clays and limestone. There is a block of 30 hectares specifically round the, the chateau that is particularly prized. The vineyards are predominantly planted to semillon. So about 90% of the plantings are semillon, with the balance of, of the, the plantings being Sauvignon, both Sauvignon Blanc and Sauvignon Gris, and they have an amount of Muscadel. Picking takes place, as usual for Sauterne, in a number of passes. The wines ferment in French oak barriques, with around 30% of those being new, and post-fermentation they'll age in barrel for a year to 18 months. So a year like 2007, probably getting a bit longer because it's a richer style and will take the, the extra oak. 2007, in contrast to the rest of Bordeaux, was a good vintage for Sauterne, actually pretty excellent. Yields were right down quite low, but the concentrated wines kept good acidity. It was a generally humid summer um, with a, a relatively balmy, warm autumn, but there was still enough humidity around to ensure um, constant um, fogs and mists to create good early botrytis. The result of that is wines with lovely fruit intensity, um, good flavour ripeness, but also retaining excellent acidity. So the 2007s are wines really designed to age. At 16 years of age and in a half bottle, this is probably getting quite close to maturity. So let's have a look at it and see what we think of it. I mean, my first impression is that's a stunning colour. It's a wonderfully orange, golden colour. I mean, you'd almost say there's a sort of a coppery vibrancy to that colour there. As I swell it, the wine does actually form you know, quite um, quite noticeable tears eventually. Um, so let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? Those are quite heady and honeyed. There's some sort of top notes of honeysuckle perfume. There's a very well integrated vanilla note in there, I think. You can smell things like um, marzipan, treacle tart, um, notes of sort of orangey uh, notes, maybe slightly um, apricotty notes, candied peel. They're all there in plenty. They're incredibly well integrated, really, really smooth, seamlessly so. Um, so let's have a taste, shall we? On the palate, that's got a lovely sweetness. I mean, it's not incredibly sweet. I wouldn't think it was much more than about 100 grams per litre of sugar. There is a honeyed nature, but it's not cloying at the finish. It's a medium weight. I mean, it's not particularly heavy weight, so turn. The alcohol says it's at 13.4%, and it's adding a little bit of warmth, but not a lot to the, the mid palate. And the, there is just such lovely freshness and that's keeping the fruit um, 
very fresh and attractive. There really is a sort of a, an apricotty note under the honey note. Touches of orange, touches of candied peel, a little bit of sort of burnt sugar. I can imagine that pairing really beautifully with something like a creme brulee. Um, simply because the, the two flavours would contrast with each other beautifully. Um, and yet there is this intensity of this um, orangey, rich apricot, dried apricot sort of note there. You know, such as its in, in intensity there. The finish is lovely and clean, and those flavours, those sort of lifted, um, rich fruit flavours are carrying on there. Um, there are tiny notes of almond and marzipan, um, all beautifully well integrated there with the fruit. And the flavours are lasting well, they're delicate, but very persistent. Um, this is a lovely wine, actually. Um, I mean, I think it's probably at and around its peak at the moment. I think you could probably very happily keep that, probably for another five to ten years, um, and it would still be at its peak and I don't think there'd be a huge rush to um, drink that uh, you know it wouldn't decline rapidly after that it's got such lovely acidity and really good fruit concentration I don't think those would fade particularly quickly um, and possibly also um, in a full bottle would um, would age even longer but um, yes thank you very much for watching that has been um, Chateau d'Arche Sautern um, the 2007 vintage of that hope you found it interesting if you did please do sign up and follow us on youtube and, and you know perhaps we'll see you for some other videos very soon if you've enjoyed the video please like it please share it with your friends but most importantly i do hope you'll join us again bye now